What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Jake Rohde. I didn't get it wrong this time. It's been so long. We usually do these all the time, but it's been a hectic year to say the least. Um, we've had some good true DFS finishers. We had an MMA win for a hundred thousand the other night from a guy with 200 bucks invested. We had sheets with the third in the millionaire maker, which he was fortunate not to be watching because it was a brutal loss to not win the million. Um, I've been doing really well with basketball lately, just small profits, but not quite getting the, the big one. The big one's coming, got, got stat corrected out of, out of 40 K. That was no fun, uh, last week. And, uh, now we get Rody, and this is the time Rody. I think that it's time for you and I to win a tournament. So let's, let's get it right this week. Yeah, for sure, man. We need a couple big wins here. This is going to be an interesting slate we got here for this weekend, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's It just got a lot. Like, I spent hours and hours today building a bunch of different lineups. I posted those, by the way, in my early builds. I'm still going to use some of those, but... Honestly, that 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 you know, you get the game moved to your hometown now, and that that Bills game, uh, that game just this the the total has already jumped. I think six points. It's going to be a whole different situation than the mess they were going to play in three you know three to six feet of snow they were expecting the night before, which I think sounds ridiculous. I don't know if that can be really be real, but anyway. So we'll, no, we'll it's real it. in Buffalo. They get that kind of snow. I mean, heck, the west west side of the state in Michigan right now, we're supposed to expect almost over two feet of snow. So it's it's nuts right now. I'm Damn, supposed man. to get like 10 inches. I mean, we're, I'm not close to the coastline or anything, but man, it's, we're supposed to get hit all the way till Sunday, all the way through Sunday is the warning for snow up here too, even. So it's, there's yeah. a lot of snow up in the North side of the United States right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about, you know, I think there's more viable game stacks and because there's hard to find the ones that stand out like crazy. So my early guys, my early game stacks and I'll, and I'll I'll get your thoughts on, on this first before we get into positions, but I, I like the Cincinnati Pittsburgh game. I think that game's getting overlooked. I understand they played a dud on, on the first game of the season when Cincinnati gets rolling. It just feels like somebody goes completely nuts or the whole team goes nuts. And I, and the Pittsburgh is so cheap on the comeback side of it and Cincinnati's defense. I don't fully believe in entirely. I, I'm, I like that game a lot. Um, Dallas, Minnesota. I'm having a hard time getting to the stacks because of the pricing but I kind of like that. I mean, I like that game environment. Uh, the Giants in Detroit, I think just every time Detroit's playing, you got to you gotta play some Detroit. You got to play and, and who they're playing. Buffalo, in Buffalo, Cleveland is now going to be a priority for me. It was one that I wasn't as high on. Philly, Indiana, not quite as high on that one, but I do like it. And then Atlanta, Chicago being my main, the main place a lot of my money's going. What scares the hell out of me is Atlanta just running the ball 40 times. Um, hopefully Chicago can stop the run a little. So I know that's a lot of games, but which do you like any of those games or what games are you looking at this week? Yeah, I mean, a lot of those games I like too. Um, my ownership isn't showing up as well. Um, you know, for for mine, zoom zoom in on the page so we can see the ownership a little bit. Bobby, oh, can you I'm do sorry. it? Looks like I thought I was. Let's see. No, yeah, it won't. Well, back back the other way. Go the other way. It's bigger, bigger, bigger. Oh, you want it like this? Yeah, I want to see these QBs. Oh, I'll slide over. I'll slide over to the ownership here. We got yeah. Goldies. No, I could see. I could see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of the aggregate ownership right there is kind of what I'm going to look at. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, some of these games are going to be, I mean, it might be spread out a little bit more. Like, I, I do like Lamar and Baltimore. I've been liking him a little bit more this season. I didn't play. I've, I've been actually liking Lamar and Hurts a lot more this year than mm -hmm. I have. And, and Josh Allen definitely going to be, he's projected to be the number one. Mm -hmm. um it, well, he, he doesn't have that big of projection yet for it, it, Saberson's probably going to bump that up some mm -hmm. um I'm sure he's going to be higher owned than that too that looks kind of off but it's sure. kind of neat to see that every you can see the spread outness right like every but nobody above 10 percent on, on yeah that looks kind of weird though don't you think I mean I think it's going to be spread out a little bit too but man I feel some of those guys are going to get a little bit more don't you think I think I think that fields will end up being in like 14 15 percent in the high buy-in stuff that's where yeah. I would say, I think you'll see more, more fields in the high buy-in uh, situation. And by the way, I just want to real quick, before we get into everything that Rody's about to say, Goldie's ownership projections are uh, industry aggregate, literally every, every, you know, all the major sites in the industry. So they're probably the most accurate of projections you can get. So I think you should, you, people should, should, should weigh them heavily. Uh, great job by Goldie. I'm actually going to be recording with him a little bit later. Um, on, on, and we're going to do another sort of a different look of an NFL show, but just wanted to give a shout out to Goldie and, uh, his projections. Cause I, it's really an industry aggregate. And I think that's really, really cool that no other sites doing. 
So, you know, factoring in the ownerships of everything and every and all that. But give me the games. I, I like that you mentioned the Baltimore thing because I do like the Baltimore side, and you could you have the the natural easy run back with more. Um, one thing I, I like also, I think Deontay Foreman gets completely overlooked. And I mean, this guy can run, he he's tough to bring down. And I know Baltimore's defense is solid now in the run defense, but just because of the other people in this price range and a week where I don't love these running backs that are chalky, Deontay Foreman is definitely going to be a good run back. If you're going to play that stack or, or uh, either he or more, I think you're going to play as the run back, right? DJ Moore. Yeah. Yeah. I've been running some no run backs a little bit this year, but like, I don't know if that game's going to stay close. You're going to have, have to have more or, or Foreman get in a couple of touchdowns. I think it make that game a little bit more interesting. I think we got Baker starting this week again. So maybe that hypes him up a little bit. Um, you know, he, he starts chucking it a little bit and gets, gets DJ more involved a lot to, uh, in the, in the past game. I think Mark Andrews is going to come back on that game at 6,800 on DK. Um, so that might be a game we can look to stack and um, a little bit up. Too. I, I kind of like high total for Baltimore, not as high total for Carolina, but that just probably means more foreman or two of the guys that I would run back in that game. Mm-hmm. Probably be a little lower owned, so that'd mm-hmm. be good for the stack. Agree. And then your super long shot one, if, if I was going to play that stack for me, would be Lavisca Chenault. Is there any game I didn't mention that maybe you like that that, that I that I didn't get to? Because I know there's some people talking about the the Vegas Denver thing it's getting very hard for me to justify playing any Denver anymore. <laughs> like maybe a one-off of Sutton or something, but like, or Hinton, if, if there's no Judy, but I can't get, I don't know. I can't quite get to playing Denver. And this feels like a spot where if you're going to go off, you, this should be it. Right. I don't know. I just can't do it. Yeah. Russell Wilson's price is so cheap. He's got weapons. I mean, man, I just feel like I played him last week. I got suckered into that lineup again last week. Mm-hmm. You know, do I sucker some lineups into that that this week again? I, I don't know. Maybe in the three dollar or something, throw a couple in there. I, I don't think he's going to end up in a big lineup again. But I mean, you know, Judy and Sutton. I always liked receivers. You know, so it's definitely viable. I think. I think that would be a sneaky game that nobody's on Raiders haven't been very good. And, you know, you got good runbacks in that game. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Devonte Adams, the clear run back, and he's been winning all the money last week. We talked, I think I talked JT and Adams and then I ended up having only JT and Adams and, you know, a few lineups and then they were in the wrong stacks and then the right stacks. I didn't have JT and Adams. So I was like, kind of screwed myself there, but That's yeah, Devonte Adams, a great run back for that Denver stack. If you, if you want to pull that off some larger field. Yeah, yeah, I do like it. And it's funny because the game you'd think would be, everyone would be off. But you got a bunch of guys around 10% ownership, which is interesting for Denver. And it sort of happens every week. And yet, I don't know if anybody from Denver has been on a winning millionaire yeah, maker lineup anyway. But, may, but maybe you could maybe you use it for the sweep or something, the three max or something like that. I, I do think that makes more sense almost in smaller field than it does larger field with the way things have gone. But let's talk about some yeah. of these positions. And, you know, you, we again, the quarterbacks are going to mostly for us sync up. I'll just do the over under thing of where I'm going to be. I'll be under on Kirk cousins. I'll be over on Justin Fields. I'll be uh, probably like just slightly over on Lamar. I'll be over on Daniel Jones with the field on Dak Prescott, probably five or 6%. Josh Allen. I'll be over the field. I won't play Mariota. So I'll be under Jalen hurts. I'll be maybe slightly over. I'll be, I'll be under. I I think I'm not going to be playing the Wilson thing at all. Um, I will be well over on Joe Burrow. He's right now. I think my highest owned quarterback. Uh, Kenny Pickett, I understand, but not going to do it. Probably not going to do Heineke. Um, probably not going to do Matt Ryan, not not Jared Goff, not Derek Carr, not David Mills. So I'm going to keep my guys like six or seven quarterbacks that I'm using and then just basically cross everybody else out. Is there anybody else you're looking at here? Um, who are you looking at at the most, you know, your most owned? And then uh, who who else are you considering? Oh, I was wondering why my, my, my thing is all messed up right now. I'm like, I got other games we're not even talking about on here. I'm like, you did the Thursday through Monday again, huh? Yeah, I did that again. <laughs> this week. Well, I wasn't getting things were popping up right. So I was like, oh man, man I want to play some Justin Herbert on this late. You didn't even mention I would this. love to play some Justin Herbert on this late. <laughs> My bad. Um, yeah, I mean, Mariota's popping a little bit. I think in the projection model is a uh, is more he's like the popping for third, third or fourth high. No, he's more of a cash consideration at five five, but he you know, he's popping a decent amount. I mean, I know you don't like him, but point per dollar, he's okay. Justin Fields' price has come up a little bit. I haven't really been playing him a lot, but he's been beating me a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that Dak Prescott, you know, he could be a viable option today at, or t- Sunday at 6-6. Six, six. You know, that I've been playing a lot of just trying to get Justin Jefferson always in the game. I mean, he's a beast. 
And I know you don't like Kirk Cousins, but I mean, Dak on the other side with some CD, maybe, you know, throw mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson's price up a little bit, I, you know, but I don't mind that game. My, can, some... can I point out my, my reason for not liking it real quick? Yeah. Why, why, why I really am off. And I just think playing guys like Mariota and cousins are, are sort of for the birds as they, as the, as the old people say, um, I don't understand playing guys who haven't hit 24 fantasy points in a matchup all season. Kirk Cousins has a terrible matchup too, by the way, all of a sudden, because Green Bay scores some points on Dallas, which by the way, was they only threw the ball 20 times again in that game. Um, all of a sudden, Kirk Cousins is a great play. Uh, not for me. I, I don't care if I'll use a, I'll use a naked quarterback with the receivers in that game before I play Cousins. Cousins has an eclipse 24 fantasy points this season. Nobody's no quarterback who's played every week has thrown fewer quarter, fewer passes than Marcus Mariota. That's why. Yeah. yeah, no, for the record, I, I don't think I'm going to get to Kirk Cousins either. I just like Justin Jefferson. I mean, I, I watched that too. last game last week. Oh, dude, he's a what a He beast, was huh? beast mode. And yeah. I think even a bad quarterback can throw that guy the football. So, I agree. you know, he's getting wide open across the middle. And if Dallas receiver or cornerbacks lose him for a couple, I mean, he can we well, can have a pretty big game. Um, it, it might be a game where people aren't wanting to spend that money at receivers. So I always look at it different to differentiate my builds a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I definitely like the Jalen Hurts, the Lamar, the rushing up upside quarterbacks. As I started off, remember, I talked about those two guys and then Josh Allen now in the dome game in Detroit. I mean, we got three elite quarterbacks on this slate that's going to get a lot of ownership, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, and then you still got Justin Fields in there. And then you got Joe Burrow that um, Bobby really likes. So yeah, I don't I don't see us having to dip down on these these crappier quarterbacks this week as much, you know, maybe, maybe throw Russell in a couple lineups or something or, or Dak. I kind of don't mind uh, CD Dak, Justin Jefferson, and try to find some low, low, low on running backs, but. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think, I mean, that's, that's sort of where I'm at too. And let's go by salary and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave the ownership to the folk up here for running backs because you got an interesting situation. Well, I, uh, it's a terrible matchup, obviously, for Chubb. I'm always interested at, at, at 0% owned Nick Chubb because I swear every time it feels like he's never owned, then, then he go, that's the game he has three touchdowns and 150 yards or something like that. Um, he's just great in general. But I, I'm basically not as interested in the higher end running backs. I actually think Jonathan Taylor is the one I have the most exposure to along with Kamara and Mixon. Other than that, I'm, I'm dipping down. I will eat some chalk with Ramondre. I will eat some chalk with D- Damian Pierce. Um, I am going to force Corderell Patterson, even though they've made it clear that they're using three running backs. If Chicago can get out to the lead, I feel like they're going to use Patterson more. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to talk myself into it. Montgomery, um, Jamal Williams depends on his health, obviously. And then Foreman are, those are my main running backs. And I, if for, for this week, I don't think I'm using that many running backs in my flex. How about you? Uh, yeah, I haven't got to the specific builds yet, but, um, I, I've been, I don't mind doing the, you know, if we don't have a really good running back slate, then I, I tend to, I tend to get a receiver or a double tight end or something in the flex with a, mm-hmm. with the extra PPR on DraftKings for sure. Um, I don't mind. So for running back wise, you know, Ramon's going to grade out well. Um, you know, we got the mixing against, you know, you like Burrow, but I mean, there's mixing in that game. Kamara has been busting people out lately. Um, some of these guys are popping, you know, JT still at only seven, eight, maybe he should be worth more. He's in a, he's a potential run back in that game, but they're probably going to throw the ball a little bit. I'd say, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of br- brutal here th- this week at running back. I don't mind the foreman call. We don't know about Elliot and Pollard yet. They're still splitting carries. So really it's hard to go there. You know, you got foreman now at 5,900 might be a value play in that Baltimore as a run back. I know you said Chubb, but you got hunt there always getting some work too. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in a dome game. Maybe gets a lot of dump off passes now. Uh, you know they're playing from behind or something. Um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough slate. You know, um, mm-hmm. well, I'm gonna let's, probably let's have a tight core, the, tight core running backs. Yeah, let's let's revisit the Pollard thing for one second because I actually think I could make an argument for him even if Zeke plays. I think he's the better running back of the two by a pretty good ways. I don't think it's that close. Um, I don't know how healthy Zeke is to, for them to force him back. It feels more like a, Oh, it's a big game. We're going to try to make him pl- like, I, I feel like it's gimmicky or something. And that somehow Pollard still ends up with the dominant role. Do you think that's crazy? And, and that maybe this Pollard might be the steal of the week. Yeah, it might be the steal of the week. He's probably going to get lower ownership now. Cause he's not projecting as well as with Elliot back in there. 
Um, we'll we'll still have to wait and see. Maybe they'll come out with something like Elliott's going to get like ten carries or mm-hmm. or low amount of carries or something, uh, or Pollard's going to get most of the work or something. Um, but yeah, I mean he's just he, he's probably a good. I mean his price is up a little bit now, but like he yeah he's a good running back. I, unfortunately, I got Elliott in my dynasty league, which is not looking good. And nobody wants yeah. to trade for him, so I'm stuck with him. But uh, he's like yeah, the Pollard, model. Of, Pollard could be the guy. So he's the model of what the NFL told us was happening with running backs, right? Like they said, okay, the guys aren't going to last as long, and you over if you overuse them, you really aren't going to get them as long. And now that's basically part of the reason why everybody uses two running backs, but like. They use Zeke so much there for a while. And then I think he's, I don't know. I don't want to say he's fully spent because I still think he's a talented guy, but I think he's spent in terms of what, where he was. Um, all right. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's get over to the receiver because as much as I love Justin Jefferson. So this is a great argument I think to have like, so we have Saquon Barkley at 8,900 going to be the high. Uh, what is he projected ownership wise? third highest, fourth highest, somewhere in that range, basically tied, basically the same as the top guy. You have Justin Jefferson, who's going to be significantly lower than most of the, the wide receivers, and they're 89 and 9,100. Now, the difference is, so like, just as great as, as, as uh, Barkley has been this year, no 30 fantasy point games for Barkley. Great matchup. Don't get me wrong. Maybe this is the one where he really goes nuts with it. But I would rather play the receivers almost all the time because these receivers, when they get there, they put up 40s versus the 26s of the running backs. Does that make sense at all, Rody? Yeah, I, I agree. Rece- receivers been uh, really getting there with some big games this year. So yeah. O- why don't you tell? Why don't you tell me who you like at receiver this week? Um, who stands out? And I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of I'll sort it by ownership here for you, and maybe say guys who you like over or under on. You maybe want you know that you that at this time of the week that you're going to be higher or lower on. Yeah, usually I don't play a lot of digs, but I mean he he stands out to me here. He's he's great now as a top value. Um, he's he's probably gonna get higher owned than that. But I'll probably be about the field of him. Um, I, I see Pittman's popping here a little bit in there. I, I like him. He'll probably be a little lower. I like him as a run back in that Philly Philly game. You know Philly's gonna be missing Goddard in there. The weapon uh, the Eagles could be condensed on you know Devonte Smith. You know at six two on this list, he could, he could be popping. You know, you got Amon, you got Drake London. I've been playing a lot of him. He's he's popping again this week at fifty one hundred for a value. Um, Allen Robinson, maybe he finally shows up too in that Rams game with no Cooper Cup. So I mean, it's about time he 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 shows up. Mm-hmm. You got DJ Moore right there. We talked about, mm-hmm. um, like you said, AJ Brown's kind of beat up. So maybe Devontae Smith. Maybe maybe we get a cheap play from uh, the Eagles somewhere in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, Devontae Adams. Paris Campbell in the Indi- Indiana game, he, he's showing us a decent value at 4,300, but potential I like. Had a nice Portland week last Sutton at 6, 6K, and C.D. Lamb or another guy I mentioned. So, I mean, they were they were all on your list there that you had. You just had to scroll through. Mm-hmm. Um, Drake London's right there, you know, C.D. Lamb. So, I'm going to be over on these, like, point-per-value guys, probably, you know, try to get some of these good plays in. Um, they're in some of the same stacks that we talked about that we like. You know, I like the Indiana – um, Indianapolis Eagles game, you know, I like the, um, you Chicago. Know, the Chicago game, you know, so I, you know, I know you don't like Mariota, but I've kind of liked Drake London Pitts this year a little bit, you know, Oh, Terry McLaurin at 5,900 too. He's popping. I miss, I must missed him above Adams here on my list. Yeah. He's, he's too cheap. I mean, he's too cheap. Yeah. It's that just game, he, he finally you know, looked right? good this last game too. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I love the names you mentioned. I'm with a lot of this. Um, I'm going to take some shots at running back and obviously a quarterback. Uh, so I'm okay with taking a little, eating a little bit of the chalk. I like Pittman. I really do. Um, and I like, I like, if I'm not playing Pittman in that game and I'm running it back, I'm using Campbell quite a bit. That's a great yeah. value, um, with, with upside. And, and I would, I wouldn't even mind if you want to throw in an Alec Pierce lineup, by the way, if you're going to make enough Philly stacks to get there. Um, I, I, I like lamb, but I, I don't mind being a little bit underweight this week. Um, I like Amon Ra a lot. I, and I, I, lo- I, I like London. The weirdest part is I like London and Pitts, but I don't like Mariota. <laughs> like I'm trying to, trying to get my head around this myself. Yeah, that. I'm stacking that game and I'm, and I'm literally skipping. I'm playing Josh Fields with one receiver or naked and then using both the runbacks of the receivers, which is really just feels very, very strange. Um, I like. I love though. Garrett Wilson. Uh, I know it's New England and they stop whatever. Uh, Garrett Wilson is just too talented to be forty nine hundred. I think you play Wilson and Drake London together. You can sort of do whatever else you want elsewhere because that is a really 
really cheap receiving option for for guys who can who can break slates. Uh, like Thielen, but again, probably not going to break a slate for you. I like the Cincinnati receivers, uh, Higgins especially, and I really like the Pittsburgh receivers. Uh, Deontay Johnson, you do it from the PPR standpoint at 5,800. Pickens, you go for the home runs at 5,200. And then my get weird one um, that I've got for value is not popping at all here. Well, there's two. Uh, Wandale Robinson, Kadarius Tony, because I want to find someone to pair with with uh, Daniel Jones against the Browns. I, I just have to go against Detroit and 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 play Detroit every week. It's just it, it's just been too much fantasy goodness all year long. I love KJ Osborne, and no one's sort of looking at that. He had 11 targets last week. 11. I know it was wow. the, the, the they threw the ball a bunch, and it was the Bills. But like this guy is going to hit a home run soon in one of these plays. And Dallas is a good defense, but they will gamble with their corners. Um, I like Michael Gallup. But the, the guys who I, you know, I had a few of my guys written down who are the cheaper ones. This, they feel really thin and I, and I feel kind of gross saying it, but I'm just going to say Van Jefferson. Um, I don't think he's going to have any ownership and he's 4,500. You're like, why would you play him at 4,500 against New Orleans whose defenses look better? He's 4,500. Cooper Cup is the most used receiver in the NFL. You yeah. eliminate him from the offense and a team that can't run in the ball. Doesn't, don't those targets have to go somewhere? Wouldn't it be logical they go to the guy who's been there the longest, who's actually shown flashes, even if not this season, in the past? So I just like Van Jefferson as a wild card play, as a cheapo. And he's not that cheap. I mean, he should be probably 3000 instead of 4500 But that, 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 that use for cup has to go somewhere, right? So I, I'm willing to, willing to take some shots on those guys this week. Um, I will definitely always look for some spend down wide receivers. The other one who I had, who I didn't mention, was Nico Collins. Um, more, a little bit thinner, but I do like it. Oh. There's one last name that I'm throwing out there that I that I used a little bit. I haven't quite committed to it, and it's it's weird because it's taking the Washington running wide receiver. I just believe that Dotson is going to be good, and this Washington team is is going to be real good soon, like in maybe next year. Um, and 4,400 for a guy who was a first round pick this year that they're start they're going to start getting more involved. Probably not the right week to do it, but keep an eye out for Dotson going forward. Um. Tight end is loaded with the same thing again, a bunch of similarly priced guys and Mark Andrews. <laughs> what, what are you doing here, Rody, with tight end? Yeah, I mean, you got all these value guys. I mean, it's hard it's hard not to play one of these 4K guys. I mean, Tyler Higby, Schultz, Hawkinson looks pretty good. Knox, Knox at 3-2 might be a favorite of mine. I love that. Um, um, he's projecting decent as a good value play. Obviously, 3-2. Buffalo's now in a dome. He, I don't know how he's not in an optimal build, but at three two, he gets he gets a lot of red zone touchdown looks, and if if, if Mark Andrews ain't getting thirty points this week, I think Knox can get you twenty, and that might be all you need. So mm-hmm. I like that. Harrison Bryant got there for the for the big winners last week, and some of the big screenshots I seen. He's up to thirty one hundred this week, but I mean he's the run back in that game. But I, I don't really like him this week. Um, you know Foster Moreau's there against Denver, uh, three seven. Um, Hayden Hurst could be a guy for some red zone targets in that with a pair with the grab Higgins and, and Hurst with your burrow stack or something, you know, Friar Muth, he gets a lot of work on the opposite side of that game. If you want to run it back, burrow Higgins stack or something, run it back mm-hmm. with a Friar Muth too. I know he gets some red zone looks Greg Dulich and that uh, Denver, that, uh, um, yeah, Denver stack yeah, yeah, that's that right. we talked about. He, he gets a lot of balls and a lot of people have been liking him. He, he, he missed some last week. I seen Wilson missed him on a, some more wide open stuff, but mm-hmm. I mean, he, he could pair with Sutton or, Ju- uh, Sutton or Judy or something and have a nice little stack that we talked about there. That's really going to be low owned, I think. Yep. Um, but yeah, the, just, just some of those main names that we've been playing every week, kind of, you know, I haven't got to commit, but he keeps breaking, breaking. Yeah, what slates. are we doing? That, that, that was what I was going about to ask you after you, and you know, what are we doing here? Like everybody's like, Oh, I'm not going to chase. Com-. Well, okay. Chasing doesn't exist. If the guys are unknown, first of all, I know he's questionable this week, but he just put up like how many of these wide receivers have even put up 20 in a game this season? Like we got like three guys who have, he's put up 20 back-to-back weeks is it, and, and with a quarterback who's ascending, isn't it logical yeah. to feel like maybe there's something going on there that, that that's something we could marry ourselves to. A, I, I'm into that play, especially yeah. against they can't cover the middle. Yeah. They're finding, they're finding the use out of their guys. I mean, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, Komet what looked awful earlier this season. I think he went games without catches. Yeah. I should look that up, but man, he went from like zero to 20 fast. 
Right. But I mean, Fields did the same thing. Everyone was, yeah. I mean, he had games at two points, four points, six points, five points early in the season, eight points. You know, mm-hmm. he's barely been used to all of a sudden six, seven targets a game, re- mm-hmm. receiving touchdowns, dropping back to back 20 point games. You know, I don't even think anybody looks. in the winter, some of them had him last week. I mean, you could have played him again on the same two weeks in a row. You could play the same lineup, but almost take it all down. Absolutely. So let's go for a third. And by the way, I'll yeah. note also that of his of his of the four targets he didn't catch, two of those were also in the end zone. So you might have been looking at a guy who was scoring 30s and been 5K this week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he really had a chance for some big ones. I'll just say real quick that I I, I do like him. Obviously, I, I like Pitts in my stacks too. I like the idea of even using some of them where I can use the both of them, um, and then just do like a full you know, spend up East stack somewhere elsewhere because you're using your, your tight end in the, in the flex. I don't think this is a bad week for it, by the way. Um, I like Dawson Knox. I really like that call on Dawson Knox this week. Um, and, and I, I will, I will also, the guy I'm probably most overweight on is Higby. I just can't get over. And it's horrible because new Orleans is really good in general against tight ends. They have been since I started playing DFS, but those targets have to go somewhere. They can't run the ball. They're not going to be able to run the ball against new Orleans. What is going to happen without Cooper Cup? I mean, if Justin Jefferson was out, but this is like Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen being out because they don't even have a number one receiver. So their number one receiver is probably Higby. Uh, Higby or Van Jefferson, these guys are going to be in a lot of my lineups. Maybe it's too much my intimate knowledge of the Rams, but I really like Higby. He's going to be popular. Um, I really like the uh, the Dawson Knox, as I mentioned. I like the Komet. If Komet stays low-owned, I'll probably end up the most overweight on him. And why wouldn't we take a chance on Jack Stull? Jack Stull, like Indy's really good. Indy has really good corners. Um, why wouldn't we take a shot that that maybe you could play Jalen Hurts in a cheap stack with Stull, run it back with the with even one or two New England guys, and you could play a skinny stack with Hurts because of the rushing upside. And then again, you can afford everything else you want. So I'm going to throw ja- ja- I'm going to throw Jack Stull into some lineups. It's very very like taking a, a weird shot, but in any Indy stacks I have, I'm pretty sure right now I'm going to play Stull as the my cheapo. Cause that 2,500 helps. And, and you see, these guys can produce. We saw it last week with the 2,700, who was the, the one you mentioned earlier, but that uh, hey, uh, no, wasn't Hayden Hurst. Um, Bryant Harrison, Bryant had Harrison a Bryant, yeah. touchdown and a couple of catches for, for that game. Yeah. And, 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 and in, in that same vein uh, at some point, I always thought Logan Thomas was going to be a better receiver than he is. <laughs> um, but he's 2,800. So I'll just mention yeah, against Houston though. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he, could be viable. Hey, yeah. one 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 guy we forgot at receiver too is Ben Ben Sharonic. Sharonic, yeah. You mentioned I mentioned Allen Robinson. You mentioned Van Jefferson, but Ben Sharonic got a lot of looks too. And that when uh, Cooper Cup was out last year in a game, um, just yeah, thirty nine hundred. He, he could be another guy you could target. I mean, I do like the Higby call because I think Stafford's going to dump it down a lot to Higby. Could mm-hmm. be a big week for Higby. Um, just because, you know, Cooper Cup's gone. Cooper Cup's that dump-off guy. Allen Robinson hasn't really been the guy that he's going to. So I'm thinking Higby or, or you know, Ben Sharana can fill that role. You know, I like that the, call. Across the middle. So those two guys look for the cross the middle. Van Jefferson and Allen Robinson are more of the, you know, the deep, have some deep shots in them and stuff like that. They take mm-hmm. them back of the end zone shots. So, so they got upside. All four of them got upside. You just got to figure out which one's going to go to. Yeah, I like I like that call. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go back since you did that to my to my other running back that that I you know literally just screwed screwed me. I mean, he was even fine, but he had 99 yards rushing and three carries at the goal line that he didn't get in. Um, but that would be if he is in fact healthy. Uh, I wanted to throw out there because I really oh, like. Oh man, game, Najee. No. we we got all the way through running back without talking about him. I don't know how we did it because I like Najee a lot this. I week. I always like him. He's 55, same price as last week too. So yep. You play Najee and Foreman at zero ownership and save all the money. Uh, it might, might be, might be into something there. All right. Before we get out of here, let's talk about defenses. I know we always say it doesn't matter so much. And last week, you know, the chalk cheap defense hit, but on a, on the weirdest play and maybe one of the weirder games you'll ever see in the NFL with the uh, Minnesota against, against Buffalo, um, the, the touchdown at the end, <laughs> that was uh, that just shows you how random defenses, uh, defenses are. Um. The steel, even though I like Cincinnati, I do like the Steelers. I could see my my core defenses here. I had the Browns. Um, I, I'm going to take the Browns off. Actually, I'll do that right now. I, I'll, I'll do it later. Um, but the Browns will be out out of there for me because uh, that was with the game with because of the, because of the weather. I like the Steelers, Saints, and Rams and Texans as my favorites. How about you? Yeah, Saints and Steelers are up there for for me. Um, 
You know, they're 2,300. I like to find a cheap defense to use and then playing a little better. Burroughs hit or miss. But if, if you like Burroughs stacks this week, maybe you're off the Steelers. Ravens at a spend up defense against Carolina. They haven't produced much. Mm-hmm. Raiders against Denver. Russell Wilson hasn't looked good. They're only 2,500. So maybe use them. Um, maybe Josh Jacobs slows the game down. Raiders get a pick six or a fumble recovery or something. Texans against Washington. I know Washington just come off a big game. Maybe they're a little slow this next week. They're only 2,400. These are just some value ones popping, guys. I mean, mm-hmm. that I'm seeing on my thing. Even Washington on the other side, 3,100 you could use. Just kind of mix and match in some of these defenses yeah. that I mentioned. You don't have to go all in on the you know the, the big one. I mean, Ravens look to be really chalky. So maybe spread out some of these cheaper ones, get, get a little bit big, bigger spend up in your build. And then maybe you just get that like Detroit Lions last week. They caught a late interception for six or something, yep. you know, late in the game. So maybe one of these cheap defenses is get a late turnover for a touchdown. Hell, we just lost on showdown on Monday night from a late touchdown. Oh God. Yeah, I don't even want to go there. Too yeah, soon, you know, Too so soon. that costs a lot of people money. And you know, just switches it just like that, you know, with one of the defenses. So you're just looking for a 15 to 20 point defense showing some sacks, a couple yep. interceptions, maybe a pick six. And then, and then, and then you're you're hitting value at twenty three hundred or you know three thousand twenty eight hundred you know so yeah yeah I like some of those defenses as well so yeah the last one I'm gonna mention is the Cowboys I forgot to mention because uh, Kirk Cousins in his time in the NFL has been the worst quarterback against pressure and we know the Cowboys defense can bring some pressure. Um, all right, Rody, any 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 hot takes or anything that we did we may have missed? Anybody you want to take a, a shot on who, who can be in the millionaire maker? We we both like Najee. I think that's kind of an interesting, hey, let's, you know, maybe that's a guy who could do it. Like, come on, let's think of somebody who's kind of a creative play before we get out of here. That, that maybe yeah, I, I, you know, side. I do like that Najee call um for sure, because that was a that was a good one. Um and who do I want to go with this week, man? I could go with a Bills second or third string receiver, Isaiah I like McKenzie. That. Uh, I don't mind 4,400, another value spend pair with Knox, have a cheap Josh Allen stack and pay up for like a, somebody else in your lineup. Oh, I kind of like that. You know what? I'll take one from you then I'll take, I'll just take Gabe Davis. Uh, Yeah. I like both those guys. So yeah, I I couldn't choose which one, but I mean, I've been playing a lot of non digs lineups like Davis or McKenzie lately um, pairing with Knox. That's what I've been doing. So um, hell I got there last week with, with it because I had J I had Pollard, JT, and Adams in my lineup with Josh Allen last week, and Josh Allen didn't do that good. And I either did McKenzie, but just that value was able to get me to guys that had big games. Yeah. So just in thinking a dome game, Isaiah McKenzie breaks one, you know, or something, and Knox catches two touchdowns, and Josh Allen's got, you know, four touchdowns, a rushing, you know, one bomb to McKenzie, and you know, two to Knox or something, and, and you're right there in the in the game, and you got a bunch of spend ups in your lineup, so. I kind of like that if you want to attack that Bills game now in Detroit. So, I, yeah, I, I'm going to go back to the Gabe Davis thing. I think we got to play this guy more in DFS. I think he has the highest score since I've played DFS of any wide receiver in that in that conference championship against Tennessee when he had the five, he had the five touchdowns, right? Was it four or five and 250 yards receiving? He's just, he's got incredible talent. And, and now that they're going to be playing in a dome, I kind of like that Gabe Davis at low ownership. I, I think I'm going to get, make, make sure to, to make a note to get some more Gabe Davis this week. Yeah, Adam, um, and he just had 21 points last week. He's had a 35-point week. He, he He's the guy you want in DFS, the guy with the, the boom potential. Right, who's uh, not going to be double-digit owned. And, and he's getting six to seven targets a game average. And those are big-time targets, nine. too, some of them. So, yeah, he's just missing some of them. But, I mean, yeah, he's had some big games. So, I mean, he's, he's he, got, he can be I – mean, I, love, really I love Gabe Davis. I got him in a lot of best ball. So, he's helping me out in there. So. Nice. All right. Well, I'm going to get some more Gabe Davis this week. And I'm going to say again that I, I do think that the Buffalo and, and Cleveland is a really good game to target. I really like the ownership that I'm seeing from this under projected game, in my opinion, in the Cincinnati Pittsburgh. I really think that's going to be a game that could be one to watch out for as long as there's no wind. Um, all right, Rody, great with you, with you as always. I'm going to let you take us out with what you always say. And uh, we're going to get, we're going to. Let's get it. All right. Let's go guys. Good luck, everybody.